Enjoy this free preview from My Outdoor TV. With the largest library of outdoor shows, we are the home of the adventurous, the champions, the legends. My Outdoor TV, try us free. Every single one of you out there is sitting in your chair or on your couch saying, boy, do I want to make this right now. You want to learn how to make grilled turkey legs that look like that? Along with lemony carrot orzo and cream greens? Stick around. I'm going to show you how. Mm. I'm Andrew Zimmern avid outdoorsman, and yes, sometimes a chef. You know, wild foods, game, fish, meat, are our most precious renewable resources. For decades, grandma used to throw the pheasant into the crock pot, put a couple of cans of condensed soup on it, and call it dinner. Well, guess what? The food world has evolved, and so should your cooking. Welcome to Andrew Zimmern's Wild Game Kitchen. This is a very exciting episode for me because I'm making one of my favorite dishes for you, and I'm gonna show you a cool technique that I think is gonna change your poultry leg life. I'm gonna do grilled, marinated turkey legs. I'm gonna serve it with a lemon and herb orzo alongside uh, baked creamed greens. This dish is absolutely perfect for any outdoor event that you're having because turkey legs are, are inexpensive, everybody loves them, but it's got a couple of inherent problems. If you're working with wild birds, the longer the turkey legs maintain contact with the heat, they can overcook and get really, really tough. So I just figured out a way to cut the meat on the bone open so it flaps like an envelope. Not only does it allow me to use high heat and char them, because I love the charred skin, I love the charred fat, what little there is in that animal, but I love the flavor of fire-kissed poultry. And then, the sides. Lemony orzo, I think, is a wonderful way to cut through the, the richness of the roasted meat. It's got a lot of citrus in there. I mean, it is truly mouth puckering. And then some cream greens with a crunchy breadcrumb topping. Mm. This is a great meal. So the first thing I want to do is whisk all this together. This is going to be our marinade. I have some nice olive oil. I have some mustard, I have some red chili flake, I have a little bit of red wine vinegar. I'm using the juice of two oranges, and the reason is that oranges have a sweetness to them that results in a wonderful glazing effect without putting sugar or honey in here, which would burn. You don't want to put super sweet stuff on something you're cooking over high direct heat. In case I need to fight back some flames, but also glaze my turkey legs, I have some apple juice here in my sprayer. Very, very important. And then the last ingredient that I'm putting here is garlic. I want the garlic to melt into the marinade. So I'm using a microplane and I whisk that in. Salt, ground pepper, so our next move is I want to put the marinade into my bag so I can put the butchered turkey legs one by one in there. The next thing that we want to do is we want to butcher our turkey legs. So this is the inside of the leg, and this is the outside of the leg. Now I wanna show you something. Look very closely. Do you see how underneath the skin, it's very smooth on that side? On the inside, you can see all those tendons. Do you see those little tendons? You can feel them 
That's the side that we're going to butcher. All we're gonna do is make an incision all the way around that leg. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take a knife and go across at the top. We're gonna come down through those tendons. We're not gonna go all the way to the other side. And then all I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this knife and I'm gonna follow the bone. And then you just scrape down the edges or cut them open, give them a little pounding with your hand. And we're basically gonna cook this turkey flat like this. This allows us to do two things. Number one, we can cook these skin side up. So you have fewer sooty flare ups. The second thing is it allows us to cook in half the time because we've now cut them into an envelope. There we have it. So these turkey legs can now go in to our bag with our marinade. First move, seal your bag. Second move, get the marinade rubbed all around there. Then just open your bag in the middle, occlude the air. Seal it again and then I'm gonna store it in my fridge for 24 hours like this. Every four or five hours, whenever I'm thinking about it, I go to the fridge and flip it over. It's that simple. So one of my favorite dishes as a side or even as a vegetarian entree are cream greens. And it really doesn't matter what greens you use. I have a combination here. I have two different types of kale. I have a beautiful chard. I have some stunning collards. You could use all of these. You could use more in combination. And I like to remove big objectionable uh, center stem. And then you can tear or chop the leafy greens. There's something about that crispy skin and that fire-kissed poultry that I think marries up so well with greens, cream, cheeses, breadcrumbs, bacon in the oven. So, next thing we wanna do is we wanna salt our water. You want your water to taste like the ocean. That's how salty it should be. It should taste like seawater. So for every two quarts, maybe a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half uh, of salt. And once this comes back to a boil, I take my greens and push them down into there. Those will take about 45 seconds to wilt. Mm. Now, the greens, right, I slide into my colander, let them cool, and then put another batch of greens in. Our first batch of greens has cooled enough so that I can squeeze it. Look at all the water that comes out. And then when you fluff them out, you can see that we still have some volume in there, but that's why we start with so many greens. Now the fun part. We're gonna combine all of our ingredients here. I've got some butter, some Parmesan cheese. I've got my cream, pepper. These greens are peppery and spicy in a sense, and so black pepper marries really well with them. Of course, I wanna season this well with salt. Fresh nutmeg. With cream, cheese, and greens, there is no better combination. I guess I'm trying to put about, I don't know, quarter teaspoon in there. All right, so next thing, grate a lot of Gruyere cheese. Now, Gruyere is a lot nuttier and more flavorful than your average Swiss cheese. But if that's all you have access to, by all means, use it. All right, we're gonna have to do a lot of mixing here. And the best tool in the kitchen for mixing are the two things at the end of your arms. 
and just circulate the cheese, open up those little bundles of cooked leaves. Then load this into your baking dish. So these are fresh breadcrumbs. And I'm going to add my Parmesan cheese, a little bit of seasoning, that salt and pepper. And I'm gonna put a little bit more Gruyere in there so we have a cheesy, crunchy topping. If you're one of those people who objects to a cheesy, crunchy topping, I'm not really sure we can be friends because this is arguably what makes this dish. So this is ready. Now I place this into the center of an oven. I've already pre-positioned the rack there. I've preheated at 375 and I'm going to lower that to 350. Now, why do I do that? It's a really, really simple reason. When you open the oven, you lose 25 to 50 degrees. So I wanna make sure that this is cooking from the get-go. And this will be ready in about 35 to 45 minutes. Mm -mm -mm. So now we're ready to cook. So I wanna put another log out there on my edge so I have more coals when I need them. I'm gonna push these a little bit towards my center. I'm gonna move those over because I'm gonna use this corner to cook my orzo and I'm gonna cook my turkey over the hot part of that fire. Open up our bag and do these one at a time. The whole point of this is we wanna be able to cook these bone side down or flap down. If the marinade goes up to over 160 degrees, you can use that marinade. So I'm saving that little quarter cup in there. When I flip them and the skin starts to caramelize, I'm gonna put a little bit more marinade on the meat side of those legs. And we're just gonna let those char for like 10, 15 minutes untouched until we flip them. So I'm just glazing these with a little apple juice. Number one, it gives them shine, it gives them a sweet and sour flavor, but it also lowers the temperature on top of them. The next thing that we're gonna do, I'm gonna make our orzo. First thing that we wanna do, throw our butter into this four quart pot. I'm gonna smash three garlic cloves. Love the taste of garlic like this that's just been smashed and cooked in the broth. I'm gonna dice my onion. These are gonna start caramelizing right away over high heat. Now, to caramelize my onions quicker, I always like to put a little salt on there. And I'm gonna stick this down on that low end of the fire until that butter melts and starts to caramelize them. While that's happening, I wanna dice some carrots because they're gonna give a lot of sweetness to this dish. And all I'm gonna do is stack these up and I take one end off so it's flat so that I'm working safely. And then I come back against this stack Mm -mm -mm. Aren't those fantastic? If you notice, I'm bracketing my coals with fresh logs so I can push them in and maintain the same heat. And you can see there, my butter is sizzling. Now, 
I don't want to burn my onion or my garlic. So I'm going to add my carrots, which is going to slow down the process just enough so it doesn't burn. My next move here is to toss my orzo into that pot, give it a good stir. I want to keep the thermal momentum in the pan. I don't want to just dump orzo on top and have it be cold. I'm going to reserve this bowl because while everything is finished cooking, I'm going to make my lemon juice and herb mixture that's going to go in there. You can do this with water. Uh, I just happen to like doing it with chicken broth. While we're waiting for that to come to a simmer, let's turn these for the final cooking moment. Look at how beautiful those are. Look me in the eyes and tell me you don't want to eat those right now. And then again, let's glaze those. Now, as with any pasta dish, once you see it simmering, <laughs> the most important move is this stir. Because now, you don't wind up with a bunch of clumped, stuck orzo at the bottom of that pot. And I'll tell you, if this right here doesn't make you hungry, I'm not sure what I can do for you. Every single one of you out there is sitting in your chair or on your couch saying, boy, do I want to make this right now. Here's the upsetting part for me. I want you here right now so I can feed you. I can't eat six of these. I mean, I could eat five. Because that lid accelerates the heat inside of that pot, I've moved it so it's directly over the lowest part of the coals. We'll cook that for 10, 15 minutes, add our herbs and lemon. At the same time, our turkey legs should be cooked through after about 15, 20 minutes of cooking. Then it's game time. All right, juice of a lemon little salt, black pepper, because we're just going to add this all at the end. I'm just making a big handful of fresh herbs, tarragon and parsley, to throw into my orzo when I add my lemon juice, and then let it rest for another sort of 10 minutes while our turkey rests on a platter, and go get our greens so everything is here for us to plate up our lunch. I'm just gonna set these down and let those stay warm by the edge of the fire. You can see here the steam coming out of our casserole, which means we're probably just a little too hot. So I'm just gonna lower the temperature by backing that log out. And these legs, we just wanna spot check a couple of them. This is the smallest guy on there, perfect. Mm. I think this one is probably done too. So I combine my lemon and herbs. I'm going to lift off this lid, dump my lemon and herbs in, give that a nice stir. Oh, that smells so, so good. Just let that rest for 10 minutes or so. Grilled marinated turkey legs, our lemon and carrot orzo, and our baked cream greens. Mm. That is a great meal. Let's see how the greens are. Mm. The greens are still chewy. They're not mush. They haven't lost their texture. It's why I prefer to do this than cream spinach any day of the week. And I'm a cream spinach nut. They've lost all their bitterness. They're still peppery and crunchy. 
meltingly tender, and the breadcrumbs are crispy. That cave age Gruyere is the perfect complement to it. Mmm. Mmm. That's unbelievable. But the hero here is our turkey. Boy, oh boy. Butterflied and grilled. Mmm. 24 hours in the marinade, absolutely perfect. Tender and melt in your mouth, still juicy. Charred skin and meat. Oh my God, look at that. Promise me you're gonna make this fantastic dish. Nothing could be easier. This right here is all about seasonal eating to me. If you'd like the recipes to make this incredible meal, all you have to do is go to OutdoorChannel.com. Enjoy. See you next time on Wild Game Kitchen.